Today at shopdap.com, we're swapping an RS4 style grill onto our FS4. Okay, so before we get into installing this on this vehicle, uh, we are gonna be using an aftermarket grill. We will have a link to this one in the description below. This grill is going to be tremendously more affordable than the actual RS4 grill. So we've looked at importing the factory ones. They're over a thousand bucks uh, for j just the grill alone. So part of why the reason why we're not gonna be using a factory part, which I, it is generally my preference to do so, is because of cost. So this is going to be a more affordable version to get you the, kind of the same style look. We will have uh, the same style black optics and that type of factory stuff if you're looking for a factory black optics grill, which we'll also link in the description below where we can check that out. Let's get into our install. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is remove these clips, this cover on this trim here. There's one, two, three, four of them. And the easiest way to do so is by pushing up these, these pop tabs from the bottom. Some of them you're not gonna be able to easily access, so you have to kind of push them through. So we'll show you that now. Now in this clip right here, as you can see, you can access it, the underneath part from the side here. So you can just take a flathead screwdriver like this and pop it up. And then we can kind of pull this up now it actually came out on this one. It doesn't always come out like that, but that's fine if it does. And then you can kind of just use your screwdriver to wiggle it around. And then we can take this and put it back inside here, like so. Now on the end here, you're also gonna be able to do the same thing. Pop it up. Now this one is a little less easy and these you can, these can, you can push in in this circumstance, what we're looking to do is push them in like this, push it in, and then you can use your flathead to work around. You get your flathead under here. Use your flathead to kind of work it around. It's a little snug when you push it in, it's not it's not gonna come out quite as easy and you gotta make sure you don't lose the back end of that. So I'm gonna pull that out, out the other side and then push it back in and put it on the side so we have it all together. And same thing here, push it down and then kind of pop up. It gives it some movement there. You can then put the screwdriver underneath, use the pick to push down a little more and it'll give you a little more room to work with on this and then you can work it back and forth like so. And now we can remove this trim cover and there's nothing else holding it on that are actually hardware. There are some clips here and here where you actually have to get kind of your hand underneath there and pop it up there. Now everything we're about to show you, we are gonna do on the driver side and the passenger side both so we can remove this bumper cover. Uh, but we are on the driver side wheel. We're gonna take this torque screw right here out. And there's another one up here, which is located right here. And there's another one to inside here, which will actually give you a little bit more room to play with once you get this going but you do not have to necessarily take it out. It just gives you a little more flexibility if you need it to kind of move with this. You also can take the wheel off if you want to kind of loosen this up a lot. It isn't really a necessity, but can help you if you're struggling in working with this because this is kind of snug in place. Now we have to remove this clip here. Okay, so if we take a look at our clip here, this is a clip we're removing from that fender well. On the back here, the head kind of has this half moon shape. You kind of push it out towards that, towards the open direction. So what you're doing is taking it here, it's open in this direction. You kind of push, kind of pry this direction with a screwdriver and kind of force it this way. It will slide it off. So hopefully that helps. These things are a little bit tricky uh, first time you're using. Okay, so here we are looking up from our driver's side, we are here is our wheel and tire here, and we are going to be taking off these two 10 millimeters that hold this bracket to the bumper and the fender. 
And you can see we removed the one there. And the other one you're not gonna be able to see as well. But we're gonna take that one off now. It's a little bit closer into the fender well. Now that we're taking out this 10 millimeter, it's almost impossible to show from inside the fender well. We tried to get a shot from the bottom, didn't work. Basically, it's in this general vicinity right here. So you are gonna be taking off a 10 millimeter. You have to reach kind of inside and feel for it. We'll try to get a better picture if we can with everything off the vehicle, but essentially it's a bolt that's facing and this side it's kind of, uh, it's kind of parallel with the body of the vehicle. So it's kind of facing, the screw head is facing backwards and we have our 10 millimeter in there with a ratchet. Okay, so here we are with the bumper cover off. Just wanted to show you while we had this off, the 10 millimeter that's up that you're gonna be reaching for is gonna be up here. And this is the one that you're gonna be reaching up and over here to get that 10 millimeter bolt out. So once you reach up and over here, you can either get over or try to go under this, this bracket here and actually get that out. And as we loosen that, we, can, we should see this cover come looser and looser. And we can see a little bit of movement here in the bumper cover right here at this corner. I'm not sure how well it's gonna show on video. Now at this point, this part of your bumper cover should be loose. Now at this point, we have the belly pan off just for visibility purposes when we were shooting this video so we could get some angles from underneath. But we have this, this loosened. There's a screw here, 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 and here. These are torque screws and they are T27s. These actually are going to be required to be removed. You don't need to take the belly pan off. It shouldn't lock into this at all, but uh, we just have it off for, for so we can get shots. We can take off these four screws and then we can move on. Now here we are on the driver's side again, and here is our fog light connector here. And you will need to take these off when you're taking the bumper cover off. If you fail to do this, you'll end up with hung up wires on there. So all you do is kind of squeeze the connector and pull down like that and you should be uh, good with that and do the same on the passenger side. Now we're gonna take off these torque screws, one here, one here. Now you also are gonna wanna make sure that any electrical connectors that could be at the front of your vehicle are taken off. If you have parking sensors, if you have other related sensors like this, we have this, this right here, and we are gonna remove this from the grill. Now this sensor here, you can try to unplug it, although in this particular case, it kind of just clips in. There's a clip right here. It's kind of hard to show on this, but it, it just snaps in. So we can kind of just pop it off from the clip right there and rotate it out, feed this wire through and lay this on top of our engine temporarily. Now, again, we've done all the same stuff on the driver's and passenger side of the vehicle. That, that includes all the bolts and screws and everything else. And as long as we have everything loosened and unplugged, this should come out fairly easily. And our assembly can be completely removed here. Okay, so here we are. Our bumper cover is up on a table here. We have clips here that hold this foam in. So we're gonna push the clip up and get that foam out. Same deal here, push the clip up, get that foam out. Now we should be able to then pull this foam up and kind of rotate it out of place to access the part for our grill here. Now, we have all these screws that hold it in place. They are a bunch of torque screws. I would recommend something like our magnetic bolt tray to prevent you from having to have these things roll all over the place on you. last one right here behind this assembly is not it's going to be super easy to get to unless you have something like a Torx screwdriver like this one because there's no 
easy straight angle at it. And then we have our clips right here. Let's slide this out. And all we're gonna do with our clips is push down to allow it to slide past here. So all we're trying to do is get to clear this grill plastic. Sometimes it's easy to take something like this 45 degree pick of one of our pick sets and stick it in there and it'll help you kind of push past it without having to do any damage. You can try to use like a flathead screwdriver, but there's a decent chance of the flathead, you might actually cause some damage. So I got hung up there. I'm just gonna continue moving on to other parts and then revisit that section. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. And much like I, I was just struggling there with that section, if you're having a tough time, don't force it because you probably will break something. So just be patient and work your way through everything to prevent breaking anything along the way. There we go. I suspect that same one will probably give us a hard time over here. Yep. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. All right, now we have our two grills laid out. We need to swap our emblem over to our other grill. Now, you can do it with no emblem. Uh, they include this, this mounting uh, plate that you would have to locate on here. It comes with these. These, you have to basically position it where you want it on the grill and then kind of has these screws for the backings, screw it on there, get it mounted in place. Uh, one, it also includes this Euro plate frame holder. And then if you have parking sensors, the ability to swap the parking sensors over there. We do not have parking sensors on our car, so we don't have to worry about that. We will need to remove this logo. And then there is nothing for the S4 badge. If you would, did want to keep that, you would have to uh, come up with a solution for that. We likely will probably do something with that at some point. Um, and we will want to take this out. So let's go ahead and show taking out this Audi logo to swap it over. Okay, so here are all of our tabs we're gonna be working with. You can see the Chrome tabs are the ones that you wanna make sure that you keep intact. Uh, these are going to be probably not particularly easy to, to release. What it looks like to me is you have to pull this metal, the black portion back first, then put them both back together and then push down and usually with a lot of these things like this, you have to kind of work around slowly and get everything kind of loosened up before you're really gonna make any progress. I also would not recommend doing this on a cold grill because cold uh, stuff is gonna be more brittle and is more likely to break. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. And this is our last one. And then we should be able to work around to pop it out all the rest of the way. And we are out. All right, so we're looking at the back side of our grill. This goes on the front of this under, and it's gonna go underneath here. But I just wanna show you this real quickly. On the back of this, 
these mount across here like so. And you're gonna put those set screws in and then pull them tight to get everything snugged up. So what I'm gonna do to center this thing is, if you look here, these are gonna be in the center of your grill and these two are going to also be similarly, similarly lining up there. So we can just mount it, as long as we have the correct height in place, we can just line these up with those and you know you're gonna be centered in the grill because you wanna make sure obviously if you're gonna mount this logo that it's not crooked on there. All right, so those are all threaded in there. So what I'm gonna do at this point is take a look here and center them within the honeycombs and try to make sure that we're actually lining up. So this one's slightly on the inside of this, so this one's slightly on the inside of that. You can always measure it, but I, looking at what I see here, it looks pretty, pretty good. All right, now, so we're looking at our grill here. I would double and triple check before you finalize everything to install this into the vehicle that this is mounted the way you want. We have our emblem here, which uh, you can take a look here. There are these two mounting tabs on the bottom here that go through these holes here. So you will want to make sure that they are in the correct place when you snap this in place. We're going to go ahead and do that now and then get ready to install it. Okay, so we have here our emblem assembly with, as we were installing it on the grill assembly itself, it actually cracked some of the clips on there. So uh, we are going to RTV it to this backing and allow this thing to dry, get it cleaned up and then remount it at a later time. Uh, we're gonna have the front end of this thing off a bunch of times. So we'll do that at a later date, but make sure if you are mounting this, you do it afterwards because when you have it mounted on the grill, it kind of tweaks this thing a little bit and twists it. And I think that's why these clips were probably cracking because everything was kind of out of place due to that tension on everything. So we're gonna proceed with the rest of our install. Now we're gonna mount our grill. And to do so, we're just gonna line it up with our clips that we previously unlatched. Give us a problem going out and give us a problem going back in. All right, that one's in place. And same deal here. Everything appears to be lined up there. Just gotta get all these lower one snapped in place. You will want to make sure that all your screw ho holes are lining up along the way. All right, that's all snapped back in place. We're gonna put all of our screws in. Now remember, before you mount all your screws on there, you can do the lower ones, but you have to mount this on before you do your upper ones. So we're gonna mount this in place. And then you can do those upper screws. Now they also include this as well. This is a trim piece for um, for right here, this is holes for your parking sensors here. And this is really to block the bumper bar because the bumper bar is silver and it's pretty ugly. Um, I'm not going to install this. We're probably gonna paint that bumper bar at a later date uh, black so it's not as obvious. We're, but we do wanna show you kind of what it would look like if you don't paint the bumper bar or use this and then the alternative of if you do. So look for that. We'll, we'll show what that looks like at a later date as well. Now we're gonna mount our foam back in place. And much like we came out, I would rotate it in, rotate it in, and you can snap it in place. All right, we have our bumper. We are ready to go on. And usually you don't really need to worry about anything in terms of uh, mounting stuff we can just get this fitted in place. And I usually try to get the center set up in place and then worry about the rest afterwards. So we got our center lined up there and the rest kind of falls in place and then we can connect our, our items underneath. All right, once our bumper is mounted in place, before we do anything underneath, what I like to do is get these screws in. This will make sure that the bumper can't fall off on you, uh, even if you're shifting it below. And now we can get everything installed below. Okay, so here we are. We have our bumper cover mounted on. The screw right here is not in place yet, obviously, because we're loose here. And this is our clip here. We have one of the nuts mounted in place. And actually, I, I forgot to, uh, I actually forgot this when we were coming apart, but. I don't believe you actually need to actually take these 
nuts off completely. I think you may just need to loosen them to allow this clip to actually remove. So with these, um, with these mountings for Audi, they only require to be loosened so you can pop this cover at it out of this clip assembly right here and then they pop back in so i'm gonna i'm gonna snug this up i don't think we need to go all the way on before we snap this in place but i'm just going to snug this thing up and then we can get this screw mounted in place uh, and then we'll finish this up once we have the bumper cover all ready to go now one note i want to mention is the trick to getting this bumper cover set like this, we're not, we're not tightened up yet, but the trick to getting it mounted in place is there's a lip on the back of this. You have to pull around the clip and kind of get it snapped in place. So once, if you're having trouble getting it in, it's because there's the lip that runs along here is not cleared. The, this mounting clip that's right here, it has, a, has a, a seat right here that it sits on. So once you clear that, it should sit in place. Now we're all set installing our RS4 style grill. Thanks so much for watching our video on how to install a grill on a B8.5 S4. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of the Project S4 build. Uh.